This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome to AutoCorrect, helping you correct your auto problems. I'm Liz Gill with the lady auto mechanic, Allison Walker, ASE certified. Hello, Allison. Hey, Liz. Well, last week we had the wonderful world of rims, and today we've got the terrific something of tires. We're going to talk with Jason Burke about tires. Between your vehicle repair questions, I found Jason at Mavis Tire while I was having a tire extravaganza kind of day. Jason, thanks for coming on to AutoCorrect with us. Well, I sure appreciate you guys having me. Jason, tell us a little bit about your tire background. Uh, Well, I started out about 17 years ago. Uh, Started out as just a tire technician um, and then kind of moved my way up um, to a salesman. you know, went to college and uh, and graduated, and I've been I've been here in the Jackson area since about 2010. Um, um, just you know, selling tires, um, working on vehicle repair um, since then. Well, we're so glad that you're here. Alice and I will take turns asking you some tire questions. You know, one of the ones that we've had a number of times on the show is folks want to know about tire rotation. What determines tire rotation? Does everybody do their tire rotation the same way? Do you do that cross to the back and then bring to the front? Does it depend on the tire composition? Tell us uh, all about tire rotating. Yeah, it, uh, it depends on a few things. Um, one is going to be your type of car. Um, another one's going to be the type of tire. You know, if you have a front-wheel drive car, you're going to cross your rear tires going to the front um, and then bring the front one straight back. Um, if you have an all-wheel drive car, four-wheel drive, you're going to cross those. You're going to do them in an X pattern is what you would do. So basically, you're going you're gonna to rotate your tires and you're going to cross them going to your drive axles is the way to do it. And then you're going to rotate them um, about every 5,000 miles is about when you would want to do it. So the best way I, I usually tell people, maybe every oil change, um, you may want to get them rotated. Um, and then you have some of your high-performance cars um, or maybe a directional tire. You're going to maybe rotate those. Directional tires is going to go from front to back is what you're going to do on those. Um, and then some of your high-performance, maybe like a Corvette, Camaro, you would rotate those maybe side to side is what you would do on the vehicle. Allison, do you have a, a question for Jason about tires? I do. Um, when I worked at Hair and Gear Toyota, they had us do a watch a video on where to put your best tire tread on, and they said to put it on the rear, whether your car was front-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, or rear-wheel drive. And I was wondering if, if that was a, a philosophy Jason used, too, on his vehicle or, or you know, recommended to customers is to, um, to, to try to keep your best tread on the back. If you rotate them regularly, I'm sure it'll, it'll, it'll even out. But, but in general, if you put your best tread on the rear tires for better traction, if that was correct. Uh, yeah, that is, that is correct. Uh, they recommend uh, putting your best tires, so your, your, your tires with the best amount of tread on the rear of the car. Um, and the reason um, they started doing that is because in the event that you hydroplane, um, where you you know your tires start to lose control, you can maybe steer the front of your car out of that that skid. Um, but if your rear tires start to skid and you start to lose control out of the rear, it, it's a lot harder to bring that back um, in check. And so that's why they recommend having the best tread in the back of the vehicle. Um, so you kind of plant that back and you get you get your best traction back there during during a wet situation. So that that is correct. Jason, you know you're talking about you know steering into the skid kind of thing. What are some good driving habits or vehicle maintenance functions that can cause tire damage? What are some don'ts on driving habits to take to take uh, good care of your tires? Yeah, I mean, uh, first thing you want to keep them rotated. That's that's the main thing. You want to keep your proper air pressure. You want to do that. Keep your alignment done. And maybe, you know, the more aggressive you drive, obviously, the more the tire is going to wear. Um, you may get some edge wear. Um, it may wear in the middle a little bit more. So the more aggressive you drive, you know, the more it's going to wear out. You want to keep maybe some of your suspension components up to date. That's your struts and your shot because that also 
helps prevent uh, irregular tire wear. And so if you if you have older older struts and shocks like that, the tire just kind of bounces up and down more than it should, and you get that irregular tire wear. So you know try to avoid the big potholes, um, the curbs, that kind of thing, and, and and that'll really help. That'll really go a long way to preventing you know premature tire wear and having them. That way you get the best life out of your tire. If ever I make a right hand turn and hit the curb. Uh, my mama gives me the stink eye if she's in the car. Let's go to Biloxi and talk with Larry. Larry, thanks for calling in this morning. What's your comment or question for AutoCorrect? Um, I have a 2016 Dodge Ram, and the tires they put on it from the dealership when I bought a brand new uh, kind of petered out around 30,000 miles. <laughs> and I had a, a brand new set of Michelin Defender LTX. 275 60R20 put on, and the uh, back end uh, just kept bouncing. It didn't seem like they were uh, balanced correctly. And so um, I bought it back to the, the place. They did it again, same thing. So then the front end was not bouncing. So they took the tires from the front end, put them on the back end, ordered a new, two new tires, put them on the front end, and the back end still bouncing. Yikes. Uh, well, what, um, what are I'm some things, here, any, uh, Allison, what are some things uh, Larry uh, could suggest to try before he buys new tires all the time? Usually uh-huh. when tires start bouncing, it's the struts have gone out on them. And I have Q here with me as a partner that I work with at the shop, and he's agreeing with me too. So you've got two heads on this kind of saying the same thing that possibly that his struts have gone out and and that usually will will cause your tire to bounce a car that's out of balance usually that's vibration not bouncing that you'll get so that that's my thoughts and i wonder what jason thinks about that yeah i feel it in the seat so if you feel it in the seat it's your rear if you feel it in the steering wheel it's your front end so um you're telling me i have uh I have to replace struts at 35,000 miles. And you've only had the... Uh, but this was a 2013. A, it's only 2016, gone... 2016. Oh, 16. Oh, sorry. Ram 1500 Crew Cab Bighorn Pickup. Four-door, five-and-a-half-foot bed. And, well, um, 30, 35,000 35, miles. Well, Dodge is um, one of the manufacturers that we see a, more problems with. I would take it back to the dealership then with such low mileage and um, that's under warranty for sure. So I would met, perhaps check into that and, um, and and see what they say. Jason, so, do you have any uh, things, advice on what Larry could look at about uh, struts or tires on this bouncing? Yeah, um, Kind of like what Allison said. I mean, I know it's a low mile truck, uh, but a lot of times that's what it would be is it would be a shock, uh, maybe a shock or strut that's went bad. Um, also, too, I don't know if they are doing it at the dealer, and I would run into it here um, sometimes. You might need to road force the tires, what they call a road force. And what that does is when you put it on the balancer, the road force simulates the vehicle going down the, going down the road, and it puts a load on the tire. And that'll tell you if the tires maybe out around, if it has excessive road force, um, and that will cause a vibration. Um, so so you're saying, might, you might want to ask them about that too. So you're saying road R O A D force? Yep, yeah, it's, it's called a road force. It's a, it's a road force balancer, is what it is. We have one here at the at, at Mavis. Um, Can I ask? And what it does just kind of simulates. Oh, go ahead. Is that is that a separate from the balance machine, the road force machine you have, or is it built into your balance machine? No, it's it's built into the balancer. So, but unless you unless you select that you want to road force balance the tire, it'll just do a regular balance. It won't it won't, oh, it it won't do that. that. So you have to okay. I thought it was I automatic think, that yeah. it did the road force. So you have to ask for a road no. force test specifically. Yeah. But if so he had that on his previous tires. And now the tires that were in the front or in the back, uh, would that still cause yeah, a problem? Yeah, it sounds like, I mean, I mean, from what you're describing, I mean, if they moved, if they replaced a couple tires and then moved them, you know, moved your other ones that weren't shaking to the back, they're still shaking in the rear, 
I'm kind of like I'm with Allison. Maybe something something's going on back there that's maybe not tire related. It might be something different. Maybe maybe a, a shock, um, maybe an axle, maybe something like that. But it's real low mileage, so that like Allison said, it should be it should be covered under warranty. Right, right, right. Larry, thank okay. you so much. Right. We're glad that you have called in, and we we hope we've given you some things to think about on getting your car, your truck fixed up. We're going to have more tire info next with our guest, Jason Burt, a tire professional from Mavis Tire. Send us your emails, auto at mpbonline.org. Is your car under recall? We'll have a list of ones that are when we come back. You're listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. You can now listen to the wild, weird, and wonderful stories of Mississippi with Mile Marker. The first question that we get when someone comes in is, how is the Ulysses S. Grant Presidential Library in Mississippi? Join me as we hit the roads of Mississippi on Mile Marker. We have every letter Grant ever wrote and every letter ever written to him. You can listen by going to mpbonline.org slash radio or by using your favorite podcasting app, Mile Marker, a Mississippi Roads podcast. Get your MPB car tag anytime. It doesn't even have to be up for renewal. Simply go to your county office to sign up. When you get an MPB car tag, a portion of the fee helps MPB continue to educate, inform, and entertain Mississippians. For details, visit mpbonline.org slash car tag. We'll see you on the road. You're listening to AutoCorrect with Allison Walker, the lady auto mechanic. I am Liz Gill. If you want even more AutoCorrect, find our podcast on all podcasting platforms for your smart device. Here are the recalls for the week. There's a 2020 Mercedes-Benz GLB recall. Dealers will inspect the rear spoiler and replace it as necessary for free. 2014-2018 Jeep Grand Cherokee Ram 1500s. Dealers will update the powertrain control module software to maintain vehicle propulsion by reading the camshaft position signal in the event that the crankshaft signal position is lost. All repairs will be done for free. And the 2020 Ford Explorer Lincoln Aviator. Dealers will remove the front seat back panels from one or both front seats to verify the proper torque on the fasteners. You want your proper torque on your fasteners, folks. You can find out if your specific car has a past recall by going to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's website, nhtsa.gov slash recalls, and inputting your VIN number. Allison, we always get excited when we find out uh, how someone has taken our advice. We got an email follow-up from Scott. Um, He'd had a sunroof leaking problem, and he tested it. I guess he... He uh, blew out the clogged holes, and lo and behold, he had dry carpet. Thank you for the great advice. It solved the issue. This was Scott in Moss Point. Yay! But today we're talking about tires with tire professional Jason Burt. But we're also taking all your vehicle repair questions. So if you have a sunroof leaking question, we'll take that one too. And our email address is auto at mpbonline.org. We've got three calls. Let's go to Roger in Florence. Roger, thanks so much for calling into AutoCorrect today. What's going on with you? 
Well, thank you for your program. You do a great job, and thank you to your guests. Uh, I can't believe, I may have missed something, but I thought I'd listen to the whole program, every word. I, n I don't remember ever hearing any comment about tire pressure. If I missed that, I certainly heard no mention of how important tire pressure is to the wear of tires so please discuss that oh uh, you missed you missed that roger but go ahead and uh, and say that again uh jason burke Bert. yeah yeah you want to make sure uh, tire pressure is very important um if you're under inflated um of course your, your fuel mileage is going to go down a little um, you're going to wear the tires prematurely. Um, and if it's overflated, um, kind of the same thing. Um, you're going to wear the tire um, faster than what it should, uh, usually in the center of the tire. So air pressure is a very, very uh, big problem with, with premature tire wear. I mean, most people, they, they just they get busy. They forget to do it. Um, and, and after a few months, the tire light comes on and, and it's time to check it. So um, it's very important to do. You want to make sure that you read the placard on your door. Um, it's right there on your driver's side door. And it'll tell you how much tire pressure the manufacturer recommends to go in the tire. Um, and that's what you do. You just want to make sure you check that at least once a month, at least once a month. All right. We've got four calls waiting now, so let's go to Tom in Brandon. Tom, what's your comment or question for AutoCorrect? Uh, good morning. Uh, we're a retired couple. We have two cars, and we probably don't put 3,000 miles a year on either car. Uh, and a lot of cars don't come with spares any longer. Uh, they come with a fixer flat, at least a Lincoln Hybrid we have does. Uh, so my question is, if we only put that many miles, obviously we're not wearing out the tread. So is there a useful life before the tires dry rot? Uh, obviously it's important if, uh, if we don't have a spare that uh, we might need to replace tires after a number of years rather than a, uh, a tread life. Jason, what's, what do you got to say about that? Uh, that is correct. I mean, you're not you're obviously not wearing out the tire, but after about five to six years, um, the tire really starts to maybe dry rot. It gets cracks in you. You see little cracks around the tread, maybe around the sidewall, and that's a good indication it's, it's time to replace them. Uh, after about maybe nine to ten years, they need to be taken out of service um, completely. Because, um, you know, the, the, the sun down here really dries out the oil in the tire, um, and they'll start to develop some cracks and, and Maybe one day while you're driving, you might have a flat, something like that. Maybe the sidewall um, or the tread will, will maybe uh, bust in and then you're going to be stuck. Thanks, Tom. We appreciate you calling in. And, man, you know, if you're buying a new car, you need to find out if you've got a spare or not. That could be a, a big surprise for someone. So make sure when you're looking at your car, make sure you keep your spare uh, updated. Allison, you've talked about that uh, to make sure it's properly inflated, right? Right, because they can set off a tire light on some cars. Um, I know on Toyotas for sure it does. So that can be a reason why your tire light is on. So, yep, it's good to check the tire pressure on your spare regularly. All right, let's go to Terry in Tupelo. Oh, my goodness, the dreaded check engine light. Terry, we're so glad you've called into AutoCorrect. Go ahead. Bad that I know the MDB number by heart, but I don't know <laughs> my wife's phone number. <laughs> well, she probably doesn't have it as a nice jingle. One eight seven seven MPB ring. Terry, talk to us. So I got uh, a 2014 Prius. It's the bigger one, the station wagon looking one, and she drives it all the time. And the check engine light came on yesterday, so I told her to pull over did i went out and it was low it was significantly low of oil so i put oil in it and then i checked the gas cap and it also was not clicked my question i went out this morning you know she only works about five miles from our house i went out this morning and the check engine light was still on will it begin could that have been the problem or should i go and have it checked and I've also heard that Advanced Auto or places like that will do the check to see if there's any codes for free. But I'm, I'm just curious. Um, you should definitely have that checked out. Um, 
there's no telling what it could be. It could be a misfire on your gas engine, and, and a misfire can cause major problems. But if you want to get it checked out as soon as possible, you can get the codes read at, at, at an auto parts store. They'll just tell you what the code is. And I know at O'Reilly's, at least, they can give you an idea of what the problem is on their computer. They can go inside, go back inside the store and go into the computer, put the code in, put your year, make, and model in, and it can give you a little more information about what what is going on and what problem areas that that code has caused and what the fix okay. is for it. And that is all free. Now, right now, I know some places are not doing check engine code readings because of the coronavirus, so you might want to check on that. But either way, that's a free way you can get to kind of get an idea of what's going on with your vehicle without paying a, a shop or something like that to, to read the code. Because they dealerships, your, your major shops, your chain shops will charge to read the code. Some of your smaller independent shops won't charge for it, so you may want to go to an independent shop and, and get it read. And But to actually diagnose the code and find out what is actually going on sometimes takes time depending on what the code is. And you have you do you know you are expected to pay for that time that the mechanic takes to do that. So I would get it checked out as soon as possible um, on that. Those cars are known not to have a problem, so I'm hoping it's something minor for you. But I would get it checked out as soon as possible. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank You're you, welcome. Terry. We're so glad that you've called in. Our email address where you can send questions is auto at mpbonline.org. Jason Bird, a tire professional at Mavis Tire, is helping us out today. And Allison is taking more of your car repair questions next. What's an unreliable car not to buy? We're going to get to that. You're listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. The information presented on this program is meant to provide general information about the topics discussed and is not necessarily the opinion of Mississippi Public Broadcasting. The information presented does not create any type of relationship between the hosts and guests and the listening audience. Please consult an appropriate professional for guidance about your concerns. I'm Dr. Jimmy Stewart. The original Southern Remedy is available as a podcast. Subscribe using your favorite podcasting app. You can email a question to remedy at mpbonline.org. The doctor is always in on the original Southern Remedy. Thank you for listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. Allison Walker, the lady auto mechanic, is our expert. I'm Liz Gill. We hope that you've downloaded our app for your smartphone, the MPB Public Media app. In addition to listening to our show, the MPB Public Media app, you can su- click on the support button and make a contribution. Contributions help keep our programs on the air for you, and it helps it on the air for others to enjoy. Thank you for your contributions to Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Consumer Reports has rounded up the poorest used models for the past decade. Allison, this one is kind of sad to me because it looks so cute. Today we're going to caution you about the Mini Countryman. All those Mini cars look super cute. Between the standard Mini Cooper and the Countryman, the 21st century has been a terrible era for the BMW sub-brand. Countrymen from the model years 2007 through 2011, along with 2015, had some of the worst reliability ratings a car could have. Transmission problems factored heavily in here. Uh, 2014, Consumer Reports named the Mini the least reliable car brand on the market. So please consider reading up on the reliability of this car before purchasing it as a used car. Suggests Consumer Reports. Carcomplaints.com is another resource for unreliable car lists. If you're interested in reviews of new cars, Casey Williams is the automotive correspondent for WFYI, a public radio station in Indianapolis. He's reviewed cars and covered the auto industry for 25 years. And his review this week is on the 2020 
Ford F1, I'm sorry, Ford F350 Tremor and the Chevy Trail Boss. And I think uh, Ford should give away the DVD package of Tremor movies with that 350 Tremor. Have you ever seen those movies, Allison? Yeah, they're good. They're yeah. really funny. All right, but we've been talking tires today with our guest, tire professional Jason Burt from Mavis Tire. Email your questions to auto at mpbonline.org. Man, our phones are packed. Let's go to Thomas in Jackson. Thomas, thanks for hanging on. What's your comment or question today? Hello, thanks for having me. Um, I have an ignition issue. Uh, I have a 2005 Trailblazer, and lately uh, the key is hanging up in it. I can't cut it to seal it off. Uh, I would have to probably uh, unhook the battery or something. And then lately driving down the highway, uh, the, the vehicle just suddenly cuts off. It did that about four or five times. I've, I've changed the cylinder lock and the, cylinder and the uh, ignition switch. And it is still, hopefully that would stop it from cutting off. But it's still, the key still won't, uh, it won't, it won't, it won't turn completely off and the key won't release it unless I go into the steering column and hit that override button or unhook the battery. Uh, what could that be or, or, or how can I resolve that? Oh, that's a hard one. What would you so, so your car is you're having a problem with the ignition switch with turning it on and off. Turning and you it, re- it off. Turn, turning it, turn off. it off. But turning it off. And Okay, it. turn it off. And you've replaced the ignition cylinder. And switch. And 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 switch and you're still having problems with turning it off. Yes. Okay, and that's on a Chevy Trailblazer. What year was it you said? 2005. A 2005. Do hey, you have any idea what that could be? Is the shifter is the shifter on the column or is it in the uh, the console? It's, it, 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 it's on the column of the steering wheel. On the column of the steering wheel. Um, I did, did not know the how that one is made particularly, but I would look to see if it's uh, some type of neutral safety switch in between the column or between the shifter itself. And it could be adjusted wrong and uh, or slipped out a bit in that year model. And it might just have to be changed a bit. So the indicator when you turn the switch to unlock the steering wheel and unlock everything is adjusted properly. So that's something you have to get. You're going to have to get uh, probably a shop to look at and go into further to get that checked out and, and done correctly on that. Is there, is there any danger of driving it like that? I couldn't see any danger, per se, as in driving it like that, especially if your components are acting proper, properly. There shouldn't be any types of dangers that will that are cause it to, to short out anything else in the vehicle. It would just be the problem is turning it off. So as long as you're not having any weird um, components acting uh, erratic, then you should be okay as driving. And so right now the problem is turning it off, which I'm, I'm sure it's got to be something in the chest of the, the tumbler. And, you know, it's a lock, so to speak, inside of the steering column. How do you through. adjust that? It's, yeah. I know on a neutral safety switch you can adjust it, and there's adjustment on that. And you think in that possibly. So within your neutral safety switch, do you feel comfortable with, with adjusting your neutral safety switch and finding where that is? That That is an easy thing to do usually on most cars. And what exactly is that? I probably look it up. <laughs> neutral that? safety switch. Neutral safety switch. Okay, I would check that out and probably take it to a mechanic. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Yeah, if you're not comfortable with it, and uh, and and maybe that'll um, fix your problem and, and get you in the right direction. Let us know how that goes, if you will. Okay, I'll send it. Thank you. I really appreciate it. No problem. Thomas, call back anytime. We're glad you called in to autocorrect. Let's move over to Yazoo and go with Albert. Thanks for calling in to autocorrect today. Go ahead. Uh, good morning. Morning. Uh, I have a problem with a 2019 Chevrolet Impala uh, chassis control module. Do you, you know anything about that? 2019 Chevy Impala with the chassis control module code. It's coding for that? Yes, it's coding. Uh, all emission codes 
put a new one in it, had it programmed. Uh, a month later, start doing the same thing again. Uh, same codes. I can clear all the codes except for it's got a permanent code, and I got it cleared yesterday. And I'm just wondering by that code still being in there, would it still give me problems? And what was that last code that you said was in there? Uh, it was a permanent code it's called, uh, you had to do a drive cycle and let it sit and so the computer would know it's fixed and it's, it's cleared right now. Okay, so you don't have any codes right now? No, do not. But okay, what just my question see is, if, if it comes back on, then we, you'd have to go through there and diagnose it again but but you're saying after you replaced the chassis control module it came back on and then it came back off right it come on it was it had the uh permanent code in there the whole time but then it throws like three or four other codes but i can clear those but the permanent code would not go away until i, I went through and did the drive cycle and let it sit um my question is and now it's cleared code, itself yes it's cleared What's your okay, question, well, Albert? It, it, it will. Um, you do have to go through a drive cycle to clear codes on some check engine lights um, to get them to clear versus just erasing them. So, so you may be in the clear on that. And um, and if it if it comes back, you'd have to diagnose it and start from scratch again from there and go go through it again. But hopefully, you're out of the you're out of the clear and it's and it's uh and it's cleared up for you. Okay, with that permanent code was being in there at that time, would it cause problems even though I was not having any issues, would it still, computer think we're having problems? If it's driving smooth and everything's working correctly, then it shouldn't be a problem. A code won't cause a problem. Okay. So it should, well, generally speaking. So it, so it, as long as everything is driving good and it's uh, running smooth, the engine's running smooth, then you should be okay. Okay, I think that'll help some. I, I do appreciate it. You're welcome. Albert, thanks for calling in. We have been discussing tires with Jason Burt and taking your repair questions. You can also send us an email. Our address is auto at mpbonline.org. What is in the news next? I'm going to tell you next. This is AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. Hey there, it's David Green. You know, there comes a time when you've just got to let go of that old vehicle. Maybe it has lots of great memories, but it's also maybe just taking up space. And selling it can be such a hassle. So here's one thought. Let this station take that vehicle off your hands. Proceeds from the sale benefit this station, and you could get a tax break. Thanks. Donate your car, motorcycle, boat, or RV by going to mpbonline.org. No matter if you use an app to start your car or still have a flip phone, Everyday Tech can decipher today's technology for tomorrow's solutions. Subscribe now to the podcast using any podcast app or the MPB public media app. This is AutoCorrect. If you've missed any of our live program, you can hear the whole show at autocorrect.mpbonline.org. I'm Liz Gill with the lady auto mechanic, Allison Walker, ASC certified. Our guest is Jason Burt, a tire professional with Mavis Tire. Stay tuned after the show at 11 a.m. It's Southern Remedy. 
Kids and Teens with Dr. Morgan McLeod. What's in the news? Uh, I grew up during the eldest Andretti's heyday. It was so fun this past weekend to hear about Mario, Michael, and Marco Andretti at the Indianapolis 500. Uh, how about you, Allison? Or are you a, a, a IndyCar fan or an open wheel fan or a NASCAR fan? I'm into anything that's fast fan. <laughs> I used to race horses before I was racing cars, so it's it's all it's all the, yeah. But I do I do love the Indy 500. That is awesome. How about you, Jason? Oh yes, ma'am. I'm I'm kind of like Allison. I like anything that's fast. So I try to watch the Indy 500 every year. So I like Formula One and, and anything that's fast is my cup of tea. Yeah, at our house we loved saying Juan Pablo Montoya's name. That was he was our our hero. Let's go to Diane in Ocean Springs. Diane, thanks for calling into AutoCorrect today. Go ahead. Yes, I'm sorry. My phone was on mute. That's okay. Yes, I'm, I'm about to get a set of four new tires put on my vehicle, and then I'm going to put all of them on my car. But I have two that's not that bad, So, and I don't want to leave them at the store because they're not that bad. How? What's the best way to store them or you have any suggestions for me to keep my ties? Jason, what do you think? Well, well, I mean, you can certainly keep them. Um, I mean, we, we have people that, that come in and they keep their tires with them. Um, you know, if they're not that bad, the best, best way to store them is, you know, you want to be in a climate-controlled environment. Um, if, it, if you've got them out of the garage, they'll get really hot, they'll get really cold, um, and that, that, that leads to the dry rotting and, and that kind of thing. And so, uh, you know, Keeping them maybe somewhere where you have air conditioning, maybe some heat in the winter, that's the best way to do it. Um, and that way, you know, if you need them later on, maybe for another spare tire, you know, someone can mount them up for you, and they won't give you, they won't have any problem. Okay. I have a question. Would you recommend just replacing two tires then, replacing the two worst ones and, and leaving the, the two that are still okay on the vehicle? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can you can replace two two tires at, at one time. Um, it's not a problem. Like I said uh, earlier, uh, if you're going to replace the two tires, make sure your best one's going to the rear of the car. Um, but it's not a problem to replace just two tires. Now, I should say, if it's an all-wheel drive car, um, you know, maybe something like a Subaru, uh, maybe a BMW X Drive, um, they recommend doing four tires all at the same time. If it's an all-wheel drive, um, if the tires are within maybe two thirty seconds of each other it's not a problem but anything um that's more than that they recommend doing all four at the same time okay all right thank you much oh you're welcome diane thanks for calling in let's go to lee in jackson lee thanks for calling into autocorrect go ahead good morning how are you all fantastic now that you've called well, I have a question about brakes. Last week, I had some new brakes put on the front tires as well as uh, the installation of some rims. And uh, for reasons uh, that this, this, the back story is just too long to go into now. But nonetheless, uh, I had a suspicion that they did not balance the wheels on top of it was still um, shaking and vibrating through the steering wheel when I got up to high speed. So I took it to another shop to see whether or not they had been balanced. And the shop told me that they were not balanced. And then they told me I needed some new rotors, that all the rotors on all the tires were, were shot. And so I explained I just a couple of days ago had some new um, brakes placed on the front. And he said, well, you're going to have to have those replaced when you replace the rotors. And I said, even though they're new, he's like, yeah, they should. Whoever put these, the new brakes on should have told you these rotors are shot. And they should not have put new brakes on uh, without replacing the rotors or at least advise you of that and why not. But that did not happen. They did not advise me. They just put the, the brakes on. And so the question is regarding once I replace these rotors, which have to be replaced, will I indeed have to buy new, new brakes for the front? Let me say first that I agree with the first people that you didn't need the rotors replaced more than likely. You can you can replace the pads without replacing the rotors, and it may and the, for all four rotors to go out at the same time is highly unlikely because the front wear faster than your rear by a dramatic amount. 
so the fact that they would be all the same so i i kind of feel like this shop is telling you something that's not true so i'm going to go with the first shop and say your your rotors are probably fine and you don't need them replaced and and as far as rotors being shot um it takes a, a a long time for that to happen what's the mileage on your car it's uh, about 145,000 on a 2011 Mercedes S550. Right, okay. Maybe the front rotors may need replaced and they they could have told you that. Well, we have grooves. He showed them they had a lot of these grooves on the front. Very groovy. And that's what he was okay. pointing to. He said they should have been smooth. They should those rotors should not have okay. all the grooves that they that he showed me that they had. And he okay. showed me another one where it was very smooth and mine was not smooth. Like I said he had a whole bunch of grooves on the on the front rotors. Does it matter? Does it have grooves? It doesn't really matter that much. The, the grooves on it could, it could. The reason they probably told you on the second shop to go ahead and change them to the grooves. The first shop most likely should have seen the grooves in front of those on to you. They should have done it at least. But um, they give you the choice. Now, if the grooves are that heavy in it, then it most likely could um, cause heat cracks as well. And with the heat press, you're going to give you an unsteady ride, and they're very hard to, to see. They almost have to get a magnifying glass and get really close up to it, so they would have at least gave you the option of that. Now, the second shop, you've got to be very weary of you know, stumbling trying to make you change more than what needs to be. Just like, like it's unlikely that the yeah. rear that yeah. the rear are at the same time worn that far. Yeah. It takes a really long time for your rear brakes to wear wear down because it, your car primarily uses your front. So you, you may want to have them show you specifically the rear rotors too and see if they have the same problem. And, um, you know, so it may, it may just be your front rotors that have the and grooves. When I looked at them, the, the front did have more grooves than the back. So it did look like the rotors, because I'm not a rotor person. I, I don't know one from the other. But based upon what he was explaining for us, the groove, which was indicative of the wear and tear, the front did indeed have all these grooves where the back of their, they were, were less. And I'm more concerned about, since I only replaced the brakes on the front of the car, if I indeed have to replace the rotors on the front of the car, will I have to indeed buy new brakes for the front when I just bought new brakes for the front? Right, like new pads with with the new rotors. If it were me, I wouldn't do anything. I would leave it as it is, and when you need pads again, then replace the rotors. Um, your pads will wear into the grooves and fit in with them when as they break in to the to the rotors, and unless you had a problem but the the problem, the chance of you having a problem with it is highly unlikely. But if you do choose to go ahead and replace the rotors, go ahead and replace the pads because they they yeah it, it, that makes it because it because of the grooves that have worn into the to the new pad. And, and on top of that, he was saying about the balance because they went on in balance. And he said, but you probably still going to feel some shaking because as long as you have those rotors on there, that it's never going to be truly balanced because of the grooves and he said now because of the wear and tear something about spacing between the rotors and the worn out rotors and the new brakes and sure enough after their balance when i get up to high speed i'm still having this shake when i get around 70 it's it's shaking as if they're not balanced lee i'm thinking you're going to need to email us so we can contact you so that allison can continue this discussion because we are plumb out of time thanks for calling in lee we appreciate you jason thank you so much for being part of autocorrect i'll see you next time i'm at mavis tire okay Thank All right. Well, thank you guys for having me today. All right. That's going to wrap us up for today's autocorrect. Our call screener for today is our great Java Chapman, and our board engineer is Michelle McAdoo. For Allison Walker, Allison, who was your buddy in the shop with you today? 
customs and had two I'm working at a shop with and have partnered up with and um, he does, he's got years and years and years and years of mechanical experience and then he specializes in upholstery now. Well, we're going to hear more. Stuff. We'll he, he need to do a new show about what Allison is up to. Allison Walker, the Lady Auto Mechanic. Thanks for joining us for AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio.